Listen, there's a lot at stake right now for our border, for our, our economy, for inflation, for the international global situation. I sure as heck don't want to be running around the world getting into all kinds of fights that, you know. But then again, you got to be clear on this, right? Because people say, oh, he's an isolationist. And I've talked to him about this. An isolationist until you say, okay, you know, our word has to mean something. The problem with Joe Biden is he's talking out of two, two sides of his mouth. Do we have the Kirby side? Dude, where John Kirby is like he's saying one thing about his commitment to Israel and then saying another or talking, you know, out of two sides of his mouth with Iran. I think we do. I want to play this for you guys because John Kirby, who was the Pentagon spokesperson and now is the Trump spokesperson, was sort of contrasted. Somebody put this out on Twitter and I thought it was really clever because you hear him then and you hear him now. Watch. The U.S. will have visibility. and We'll be able to engage in oversight about where the money was going. And for what purpose? If Iran tries to divert the funds, funds, we'll take action and we'll lock them up again. And there will be sufficient oversight to make sure that the request is valid and that it's going through uh, uh, vendors who we, who we and the Qataris can trust will actually contract for the goods, the medical equipment, the food, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. The regime doesn't get to touch the money, Peter. doesn't go to them. They don't get to the, they don't get to decide uh, ultimate destination, uh, and uh, and they have no direct access to it. Um, John, Iran made two transactions withdrawing from the previously frozen funds in Oman. What were those transactions for? I don't have the details on that, Jackie. You're gonna have to let me get back to you on that. Okay, um... Yeah. Okay. And can we go to Peter again? Because Peter over on Fox. He hit the nail on the head. He's asking, like, what, what the heck's going on? What are all this money? All this money that you guys have released. And John Kirby just wants to laugh about it, for goodness sakes. John, I'm sorry. This is not a time to laugh about this stuff. We need accountability in Washington, D.C. from the Biden administration. No more playing nicey-nice with any of these guys. You get a sanction. You got to actually follow through with your sanctions. And you got to actually stand for something, for goodness sakes. Here we go. I'm not concerned. Now that we know that the Iranians do not listen to President Biden's public warnings, is there any regret here about unfreezing billions of dollars for Iranian leaders during the president's administration? What unfreezing are you talking about? He unfroze billions of dollars for Iranian leaders? Yeah. Really? It's in the money. I don't think so. Okay, so you first of all, say it's for humanitarian purposes, but doesn't that? But you don't un- believe me. Well, doesn't that free up money for them to spend on other stuff? Where do you get the money for an unprecedented number of munitions to to fire at Israel? So first of all, I'm betting if they're sitting in Tehran, they're taking it seriously when President Biden says he's going to defend Israel. We put skin in the game, a whole heck of a lot of it, and knocked almost everything out of the sky. So I'm betting they're taking it pretty seriously. And as for this, uh, this unfreezing, none of that fund, none of those funds, funds set up in an account, by the way, by the previous administration, goes directly to the supreme leader of the IRGC, can only be used for humanitarian purposes, and we're watching that account very, very closely to make sure that that's what happens. It can only be used for humanitarian purposes. You understand money's fungible, okay, guys? Like, why do I have to break this down? If money is money, right? Like it's completely fungible. Whether you want to earmark it for humanitarian purposes or earmark it for something kind of bad, like you don't get that say, John Kirby, Joe Biden, Anthony Blinken. You don't get that say. Iran gets to decide what it's doing with its money. Sure, it can tell you, okay, we're going to put this towards humanitarian. And then what do you know? Boom, presto, it gets diverted into something else. This is money. Okay, period. I can't believe like the the lack of economic sophistication is truly a problem for this administration. I mean, let's 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 think about all of it. I mean, consider consider where oil prices are now. Consider how much energy prices have gone up, how much everything has gone up since Joe Biden came into office. Well, part of that is, frankly, because of his own stupidity. He's got an energy secretary there as a former MSNBC contributor, former governor of Michigan who doesn't know her, you know what, from her elbow. Doesn't. Truly, truly doesn't. 
told my friend Tom Keen over at Bloomberg when she started, he said, so what's the grand home plan for, for reducing gas prices? And she laughed like a hyena. I've played you that. I mean, go back and look at it, guys. It's unbelievable. She laughed like a hyena. And she said, well, you know, I can't have any control over that because OPEC's in charge. No, no, no. You absolutely can have control. Again, oil is fungible. Oil's a global market. And you know what you do in that case, Jennifer? You actually pump more oil in the United States of America to help bring oil prices down. In other words, the Saudis... OPEC, they can do it all they want. They can say, we're going to tighten supply. Well, if you increase your supply, haha, you're not part of OPEC. You can help reduce energy prices. But they didn't do that. They didn't do that. And then they went into this situation in Ukraine. And they knew they were going to have to block natural gas from Russia. So what did that do to natural gas prices? Duh. <laughs> it, it caused them to move higher, thereby helping the Russians. So we won't allow any Russian natural gas to come here or go to the Europeans. But guess what? Everybody else is still getting it. So you want to sanction? Then you actually sanction. You say to these countries that are importing the Russian natural gas, okay, well, we're not going to do business with you because you're doing business with the enemy. Trump gets that. Like, really gets that. Scares the heck out of a lot of people. Because wouldn't you always rather use economic power to fight rather than the actual drones and, and the actual like ships. I mean, the fact that we have to send 2,500 Marines over there, this is a problem. We know what Iran does. Heck, Anthony Blinken even admitted it himself. He went on Meet the Press this weekend over on NBC and he told us. So it's like, buddy, you know, you know, you've always known what goes down and yet you give them money anyway, watch. What do you say about the argument that money is fungible? So Iran may have known this money is coming and used other funds to help fund this attack that happened. Iran has, ha, Iran has unfortunately always used and focused its funds on supporting terrorism, on supporting groups like, uh, like Hamas. Uh, and it's done that when there have been sanctions. It's done that when there haven't been sanctions. And it's always prioritized that. So if they're using their money to do these things, then why the heck are you giving them any money? Like, this is the common sense stuff that I, I really like. I'm like, wait, am I not? Am I not thinking about this correctly here? What is it that possibly? Let's just enter, let's entertain the other side for just a moment. What could possibly be going through Anthony Blinken's mind? Okay, well, on the plus side, they just depleted Iran of 200 missiles, drones, forgive me, drones. So good, okay, good. Iran got to do this big, big show, and it went nowhere because Israel shot them all down. Terrific. And now they're out 200 drones, which have to cost something. So you've maybe made a dent, a small dent financially, and made a small dent in their drone arsenal. But other than that, what did you do? I mean, basically, you got Iran willing to stand up to you. They're calling you chicken. How are we in an environment where we're actually at this stage, where they're doing this themselves, where they're not actually using a proxy? I'll tell you what Trump would have said. He would have said when this all went down in October. First of all, I don't know if October would have even happened, only because... He never would have released the $6 billion. You can tell me it's locked up and who knows what, like, whatever. Money's fungible. And I, I think if nothing else, if there was a promissory credit note that you had $6 billion on the way. So Trump never would have given them that. He also, I do believe, he wanted to be out of Afghanistan, but he would have done so in a more organized fashion. He would not have left the weaponry behind and he would have put some stabilizing force there on the ground so as to prevent any of these factions from rising up and creating another ISIS-type scenario. So that's what he would have done ahead of the situation. What would he have done had all this gone down and he was looking at the same exact situation today? I think he probably would have said to Netanyahu, instead of like Joe Biden, you know, cowering and saying, oh my gosh, you know, Rashida and Bernie Sanders and Michael Moore, they're all mad at me. He would have said, okay, Netanyahu, you do what you got to do. And the U.S. is behind you. 
And that in and of itself would have destabilized Iran and scared the living daylights out of Iran enough so that they wouldn't be like, woohoo, look at us, we're going to throw 200 drones over into Israel. Because you have somebody who's actually standing for something. You cannot get it both ways here, Joe Biden. You're either with Israel and you stand with Israel and you send a really clear message or we're, you're with your base. You're with your, your crazy lefties that want to go recruit transgenders on TikTok for the U.S. Navy. All right. That's who you stand with that don't want to be in any kind of conflict. You either take this head on. You believe in America. You believe in the greatness of America and the patriotism that comes with it. And you say, we're going to choose where we're getting involved. And if we decide to get involved, because we like that country, that country is on our side. You know, we make an educated choice that we want to help them. Then guess what? We do. And we mean it. And when we sanction, guess what? We sanction, which means you don't do business with those that are our enemies. Is that too simplistic? I'm looking at your, your comments right now. I mean, I, I think that the problem is that you get too many Harvard people. Yeah, Blinken went to Harvard. Overthinking this. <sighs> nothing, nothing against Harvard. Well, you know, I, I'll tell you, it's, it's, I do have something against I went to Columbia. So great school, got a great education. I can count on one hand the normal people I know that went to Harvard, in all seriousness. Like, there's some normal people at Columbia, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, like plenty of great schools in America. Um, the number, and this is going back a ways, by the way, this was back when Columbia was not what it is today. It was like, it's unthinkable, some of the things that I've, I've heard and seen and some of the hazing and the, it, that's, a, that's a terrible way of me describing it. It's like full on, full blown harassment that's happened at these college campuses. Anyway, again, um, I, I'm, I'm just sort of looking through your, your notes. I don't think I'm being overly simplistic here. I think I'm being pretty clear. And the problem is you have people that overthink it, that have all their different factions, and one team is not talking to the other team, it's not talking to this, it's not talking to that. They're just hell bent on whatever it is that they got to get through there in their, in their government. Victor likes Dartmouth. Dartmouth's pretty good. Live free or die, baby, right? <laughs> Live free or die, New Hampshire.